This week on The Happy House, presented by Creative Kids Stuff, I'm finding all kinds of gems today at the thrift store. Learn secrets on how to shop thrift. And then we have a special science time planned. No kids invited. Finally, fun projects to get your kids involved in setting the Thanksgiving table. You won't want to miss it. Hi, I'm happy. <laughs> I live in a quiet town outside of Minneapolis with my family. The real happy house is far from quiet. <laughs> I learned early on things are much easier with a little help. I also have a few tricks of my own to share. It's go time, people. Welcome to the happy house. I'm always intrigued when I see somebody wearing something really great, an outfit that looks perfect for them and then they'll tell me that they bought it or put it together at a thrift store. I'm baffled by this because when I walk into a thrift store all I see is racks upon racks upon racks. I don't know how to navigate it. Today I'm at Arcs Value Village and we're going to meet with an expert who's going to share her secrets on how to put together a great outfit for hardly any money. I love to save money. Let's go. I'm with Michelle Raven, stylist and personal shopper with Arcs Value Village. We are going to go through a selection that you have done for a client. You pre-shopped these items and she's going to come in and try them on? Yes, that's exactly how it works. How much does it cost to have a personal stylist at, at Arcs Value Village? Would you believe it if I told you it's free? I would not, <laughs> but that makes it really exciting yes, for me. So that how, makes it awesome. How did this program come to be or how long has it been in existence? Because I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's a relatively new concept for a thrift store, but it really makes a lot of sense. Um, thrift stores can be intimidating and overwhelming. It takes a lot of time and there's a lot of digging to do. So um, I just had this idea that, you know what, let me do that digging for you. And that's how this service came about. We've been doing it for about three years here at Arcs Value Village. Tell me a little bit about the person you've selected these items for. I am shopping for Katie today. She is a repeat client. I've seen her a number of times. She's a small business owner and her business is teaching Spanish through movement and music to children. So she needs an active wardrobe that works for that aspect of her life. She's a mom of two. Um, she travels a lot, so she's got a lot of wardrobe. She's busy. Yeah, how she, she is how busy. How does she do it? Well, she uses this <laughs> service. <laughs> okay, I'm ready to get started. I want these. Some of these things look so great to me. So talk to me about what we're seeing here and how you found them. Yeah. So um, with the, the client image profile form that Katie filled out, I shopped the sales floor for her, and um, then I just took a gander at what I had pulled and started putting together outfits for her. I focused on not only some great statement pieces like, you know, banana yellow pants, um, but also real staples like this a denim jacket, nice. um, a chambray is just another great, um, super versatile piece. Mm -hmm. Lots of layering um, and then accessories. Michelle, I think I see your client coming towards us. Is that her? That's our girl. Hi, Katie. I'm happy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. You discovered a gem I did not even know existed. Has this worked really well for you? Oh, so wonderfully. My husband is very happy. I can tell you that. <laughs> I think my husband will be really happy about this as well. Yeah. So what are, are your favorite pieces that you've gotten? Do you, do you have a couple of favorites that you can remember? Yes, I can. I never um, tried something like a um, pattern like this. I never thought about wearing this. I thought it was too wild. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> too much. But I did and it looked really uh, it looked really good on me. So Michelle was able to introduce you to things that you didn't yes. even think you would be able to yeah. wear. Yeah. Well Katie, I've taken a sneak peek at what Michelle has picked for you and you did? I did. And <laughs> it looks really great. I would love to see some of these things on you. Are you ready to start trying things yes, on? Yes, I'm very ready. Adorable. Do you like it? I love it. It I looks love so great. I love the yellow pants and I've never thought about combining it with this. With aqua? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I saw ahead of time that necklace is $1.50? Yes, $1.49. That's crazy. Um, so this whole look with accessories included is under $30. And Michael Kors. Michael Kors. Michael Kors. Yep, Kors and these are loft. 
uh, pants, a Banana Republic top, and I think a Gap jean jacket. So that is a really great look. So I'm going to go thumbs up. What do you think, Michelle? I say two thumbs up. What do you think? Two. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next outfit. There she is. Katie, what do you think of that? Well, I don't love it because it's, it doesn't fit that well in over here. It's too wide. I love the necklace. So I will definitely buy it. I think the accessories are the real win here because I think those sandals can be dressed up as we can see with a nice dress or you can wear them with kind of some boyfriend jeans and a cute little tee. The necklace is fabulous. I think the accessories are the win. Next up, let's go. That is a sassy outfit. This is so chic. I just love this look on you, Katie. And then the glasses. Ooh. She's going places. <laughs> yes, right? This is so good. What do you think about this outfit, Katie? I love it. You know, I wouldn't think it looks like wearing all black, like dark colors, but it really pulls it up, I think, mm -hmm. with all the combinations. Yep, the pattern, and then I think the mix in of the metallic jewelry and the neutral wedge just really has this chic sophistication to it. And I think it's like classy mom on the go. I think it's great. She does color well, and now we just found out she does this well. I can't make this woman look bad. I know. What I love about this outfit is those pants, because that is something for sure. If I'm perusing the racks, I would pass by. Yeah. So having someone like you being able to say, that might work, yeah. is really important. Absolutely, and I think that's one tip when you're thrifting, is if there's anything redeeming about it, if you like the pattern, if you like the cut, just take it in the fitting room and try it on. You never know, you might surprise yourself. Michelle, I'm gonna challenge you now. Do you think you could find an outfit for me? Let me give it a whirl. I'm just gonna um, leave you guys here for a while. Let's go <laughs> There are really great things here though. Honestly, these dress shirts are all in great condition. I mean, I would give them really a careful check so my husband could wear them to work, but they look great and it's $7.99. You can't beat that. Stop. <laughs> I'm swatting at you. <laughs> okay. Michelle found this great coat for me in less than two minutes. Thank you so much. Oh gosh, you look great in it. And the price is right, $9.99. Plus, I found a quarter in the pocket. So it's now 974. Bonus. Bonus. We had we got some great tips today yeah. and I feel more equipped to a thrift shop, but I'm definitely coming back to make an appointment with you if you'll have me. I will have you, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Coming up next, this science time isn't for kids. We're gonna learn all about beer making and what exactly goes into it. Beer making is a very popular hobby these days, and I wanted to know exactly what was behind it. So I've invited our science expert, Liz Heineke, to talk to me about exactly what goes into beer making. So we do science time a lot for kids, and you've written a great book about kitchen pantry science for kids, but we're going to talk about beer today. So I didn't bring the kids. Oh, I didn't bring mine either. Okay. We're going to have some fun. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so yeast isn't just for making bread. When yeast breaks down grains or sugar, the two main things it produces are alcohol mm -hmm. and carbon dioxide gas, which obviously are in beer, they're in, it's in cider, it's in wine. But today I'm gonna show you how to make beer using grain, yeast, and some hops. Okay. That's really all you need. So this is a premix of grain for amber ale that I bought at a local um, brewing supply store. So we take our grain mix and we're gonna put it into this sock that okay, came so with the kit. Sock, it's just a yeah. cotton sock. Okay. And the first thing you need to do is heat water up to a certain temperature because we're gonna add the grain to hot water and what that does is it activates enzymes that start breaking down carbohydrates, which are like long sugars, right? Separating out what we don't need from the grains, like breaking it up? Well, breaking it up so it's easier for the yeast to eat. Because fermentation is basically just yeast, eating sugar, and giving off alcohol and carbon dioxide gas. Right. So it's a simple biochemical this reaction. This is getting sciency here. It is kind of sciency. So okay. we are gonna dump all of this grain and then go ahead and tie it off. 
It's kind of like one of those rice socks you yeah. get at the hospital when you just had a baby. That's exactly <laughs> what I was having a flashback right now. Okay, yes. Okay, and then obviously there's no water in here, but imagine that we have heated some water up mm -hmm. in here, and then we're just going to put this in here, and we are going to let it sit at a certain temperature, like 160 to 170 Fahrenheit, for about an hour, and that's called mashing. Okay. So you've probably heard of mash when they're making grain alcohol, yes. right? Yes. Okay, the next thing we want to do is actually called sparging. So when you take it out of here, you are going to once again have the water at a certain temperature because it's been kind of cooling down, mm -hmm. but you're going to take this out, you're going to have heated up some other water, and you're gonna ladle it over this grain. So okay. we're basically just rinsing off the grain. Got it. Okay, so that's the next step. The last step is to add our hops. Okay. And hops are the ingredient that give that beer sort of that bitterness, mm -hmm. right? And depending on how long you boil the hops, it can be more bitter or less bitter. Sure. And you have these hops that you got from the supply house. Correct? I do. I got these in the kit from the supply house. And you can see they look like goat food, maybe? Yeah, like pellets. <laughs> But yeah, what, they're little pellets. What is this? This is some hops I got from my friend's garden. So you can see these lovely little cones mm -hmm. that, that they actually use to grind up and get the hops. Get the hops. So smell the hops. I mean, it smells mm -hmm. like beer, right? It smells like, like beer. Like pale ale. Yes. Okay, so you're going to add the hops into your grain water mash solution. Yes. And then you boil it. And you boil it at, you actually keep it at a nice rolling boil mm -hmm. for about, I think it's about another hour. Okay. And that reduces the volume. So some of the water evaporates. You do it with the lid off. Some of the water evaporates. It reduces the volume of your liquid. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is put it in your fermenter. Okay. And this fermenter came with my kit. It's awesome. It's called a big mouth fermenter because it has this big mouth. It has a little um, bubbler, I think they call mm -hmm. it, that you put on it that um, lets the carbon dioxide gas escape. Mm -hmm. The coolest part of this I've discovered is when the actual fermentation starts. So when you put it in here, you dump in your yeast. So as you add the yeast and let it sit, within a couple hours you start to see bubbles come up and you get a foamy layer on top and it actually looks like a living thing because it's swirling yeah. and oh, it's so amazing, yeah. yeah. Okay, so when it's all done, it sits for like two to four weeks fermenting, making alcohol basically. And then you bottle it, you sterilize the bottles you add a little sugar to the bottles because once you put the beer in the bottles and put the caps on, you want the yeast to eat a little more sugar to produce carbon dioxide to make your beer bubbly, right? Yes. So you use this little bottle filler. You attach it to your siphon. I will siphon my beer from this bottle once it's in here into these bottles. I will fill up my bottles with my siphon and it's super easy. You just pump it to start it and then I will funnel a little bit of sugar into each bottle and then I will use this cool cap machine that came with my kit. It has a magnet on it so All right, you put this here. I'm gonna let you do it. Let's scoot this stuff okay, over. Okay so you put the cap and then you put this on the bottle. I'm gonna hold it. I feel, if <laughs> no. I do this right nope. it's gonna be really satisfying. Go for it. Okay so you push in. Push and push the arms down actually <sighs> like except really hard. Oh <gasps> you did it. Ta-da! I did it! How cool is that? <laughs> so That's the best part. I know, I can't wait. <laughs> making labels might be kind of fun too. That would actually, that, that, those would be my jobs. Yeah. I would leave the beer making <laughs> to my husband. Okay. And one more thing you can do, since my kids have to be involved in every science project I do, is to make root beer with your kids. So you can just buy some root beer mix, you mix it with sugar and water, you boil it, when it cools down you add some yeast, and at the brewing supply store, you can reuse plastic bottles and sterilize them or use these bottles. You put your root beer yeast mixture in here, put the lid on, you let it sit at room temperature until it feels tight, and then you just put it in the fridge and you're ready for a root beer float party. Homemade root beer is delicious. I know, I love it. All right, I thank can't you. wait to try it. Thank you so much for coming. This thank has been you, Happy. Cheers. After these messages, we're going to set the Thanksgiving table Kids style. Gobble, gobble. It's turkey time. We're prepping our table for Thanksgiving dinner. We've got lots of fun projects that the kids are going to help me with. And it's going to make it a very special dinner. Are you guys ready to get started with our Thanksgiving preparations? Yeah! Okay. So the very first project we're going to do is make our own table runner. And I'm guessing you've never 
painted with paints that we were going to today. Are you ready to get started? Yeah. All right, let's we go. You were born ready. You were born, again, born ready. All right, let's go, everybody. We're headed outside. This is an outside project because it's got a lot of paint. It's a little messy. The first thing I want you to do is take an ear of corn. Here you go, Emerson. Thank you. Here you go, Chandler. And spread the color of paint that you like, which on your corn. And you can then apply a different color to your corn on the cob because what we want is a whole bunch of mixed colors. Now roll out, roll out. I already got it on my hand. That's all right. Look how pretty it is. This is turning out really nice. This is why I won the craft field. <laughs> He's a crafter. He's fine. He belongs to me. <laughs> Lisa's yard's a killer. You're walking like an old woman, Happy. Well, because I'm in heels and I'm hot. <laughs> Hottest Thanksgiving ever. <laughs> All right, the next thing we're going to do is cut out leaves that are made of felt. And these are going to be just things that we scatter around the table. So I've drawn some leaves here, and I just want you guys to use your scissors to cut inside the black lines. So like not on, but in? In, just inside the black line. See how I did that? So we're not at school. So we're not at school. Don't cut on the line. <laughs> cut inside the line. So I'll give each of you a sheet to get started with. I have a surprise for the kids. We're act I'm actually going to make a memory game out of the leaves once they're done cutting them. I'm not going to tell them about it until it's Thanksgiving, but then we I'll spread the leaves around the table face down, and when they're getting a little bored because the grown-ups are talking too long, they can start flipping leaves and play a memory game. It's easy. I just printed out some clip art from my computer and glued it on the back of a leaf. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Are you ready for our next project? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're going to make napkin holders, but there's something special about them. We are going to make a little note to each person that's invited to our dinner and tell them what we're thankful for. We have these little pieces of paper, and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do with these. So can you guys get started? Writing a message. But what if you don't know the person's name? Well, each person who is making a napkin holder should write what they're thankful for. So you should say what you're thankful for. You should say what you're thankful for, Grace. You should say what you're thankful for, Savannah, Chandler, and Ava. And so you're sharing that with the person who ends up getting that napkin. It's random. So you'll sit down at a place, and there will be a napkin there, and there's going to be a message from any of you saying what you're thankful for. Do we say from someone? From Emerson, yes. To question mark. To question mark, yes. Crayons, crayons, crayons. Mom, you want to Well, maybe you could say that. You could say that and thank you for you. Once everyone is finished with their thankful messages, and. The kids can write a few of them, depending on how many guests you have. We're going to incorporate them into these napkin holders, which they are also going to help me make. It's very simple. So we're going to cut a strip of felt with a pinking shears. And just, um, it could be a strip that's long enough to surround the napkin, so it's easy as that. So then you roll up your napkin, you put this strip of felt around it, and then use twine or leftover yarn or any kind of rickrack that you have and tie that around the felt to secure it. 
and tuck a thankful message in each napkin. So every guest at your table will know about something someone else is thankful for, which I think is a great way to start the dinner. The next thing we're going to do is make our centerpiece. We're going to make a really great tray of containers and they're going to be filled with beans and then we're going to have candles burning. Who likes candles at a dinner? Me. It kind of makes it fancy. It kind of makes it feel warm, right? So I'm going to pass each of you a container that you're going to fill with beans. You're not going to fill it all the way to the top because we need space for our candles to go. that. That's going to be a very, very pretty centerpiece once we have our candles lit. Do you guys think? Yeah. Okay. The kids helped me create this beautiful tablescape for Thanksgiving. We're ready for our guests. A very happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thanks for being with us. Now all I have to do is cook the turkey. So it's best to do this outside and wear clothes that are not your Thanksgiving dinner wear. Unlike what you're wearing. Uh, correct. Unlike what I'm wearing right now. <laughs>